geschrieben, was man mal gelesen wäre, sondern er war höflich. Ein Tonfall, als ob er mich siezen würde. Er hat mich nicht gesiezt, das wäre ihm nicht in den Sinn gekommen, aber er hat meinen Namen gewusst. Du, Gerald, hat er zu mir gesagt, und nicht du, Jud. Es ist gefährlich, wenn ein Mann wie Raben deinen Namen kennt. Du, Gerald, hat er gesagt, ich habe einen Auftrag für dich. Du wirst einen Film für mich drehen. Einen Film. Er will etwas Privates, habe ich zuerst gedacht, einen Film über dich selber, der liebende Vater Karl Rahm mit deinen drei Kindern, der Herr Obersturmführer als Menschwerter, etwas in der Art, was er an seine Familie im Kloster Neuburg schicken kann. Ja, wir wissen, wie viele Kinder er hat, wir wissen, wo er herkommt, wir wissen alles über ihn. So wie arme Sünder alles über Gott wissen oder über den Teufel. What do I do with this story? Then this is not something where, where you sit down at your desk and you start thinking. It happened in, in the back of your head. Um, you think about things even if you don't realize that you're thinking about them. Your computer is working. And then suddenly, and usually while I'm in the middle of something completely different, I know <coughs> how to begin the story. And it really hits me. And then I have to drop everything else and start writing immediately. And very fast I write the first pages. And once I have done that, I've sort of, I've got the butterfly under the net, he can't get away now. Uh -huh. If I don't do it then, if I say, okay, I'll do that in a month, it's done. I won't find it again. But what kind of research did you do about Carol? I mean, once I had started on it, did you I visit did, archives, for example? I did a lot of research. I even um, employed an, an archive specialist to go into archives for me, because that's an art by itself. And I tried to find out as much as I could about his life. But I think you have to explain that there are two different kinds of research that you do as a writer. And, and I've got a strange name for it. I call it the one time is the shark research, and the other is the whale research. Shark research and, and whale. whale. Yeah. What is the difference? The, a shark has his prey, and he goes there and gets it. That's when you do research about, you know what facts you want to find out. You want to know when was he born, where was he born, where did he live, what schools did he make. You know what you're looking for. That's what I call shark, because you go to your prey. And the other is, if you have the big blue whale, he just opens his mouth, and thousands of liters of waters go in, and sometimes a tiny little bit sticks to him. And that's what he uses to feed himself. He doesn't know what's going to be. So you read many books about this time, and you try to find those little things that, that might be useful in a book. First of all, maybe you should tell the audience why he went to Holland. And they had decided in Germany that Jews weren't allowed to work in the film industry anymore. So he left Germany. He looked for work all around Europe. He did a few small films in, in France. And then he was invited to Holland because they were just introducing sound film. And no one really knew how to do it. It was new technique, and he knew how to do it. So he started with a film that was a success, and then he made Marantje uh, Geisens Jörg, which became the big hit. Did you see that movie? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you watch everything? Yeah. And did you uh, did you watch all the films? <coughs> I tried whatever I could get. Um, I tried to watch some, some of his films, films that he made for me, or <coughs> terrible bad films, yeah. silly stories, but that the way they made films at the time. So he ended in Holland. He thought he was safe in Holland. Because but did, did he really think he was safe? I think, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I mean, we know, we, 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 we know the history. We know, oh, you are in Holland, you are not safe, the German troops will come. Nobody knew that. No. He thought, oh, I'm in a neutral country, I'm away from Germany, finally I'm safe. He learned Dutch, he played roles in Dutch. Did he miss Germany? Probably. Probably. Hard to say, yeah. 
And there were a lot of, I mean, they were really a, a whole group of German people that had worked with him, and now they were in Holland. At the end, they all ended up in Westerbork and had to do cabaret for, for the commander Gemmick. Yeah. The second function of Theresienstadt was as a place to sell famous troops, the prominent <coughs> though they were ministers of the state, they were generals, they were professors, <coughs> they were film stars, all the people that the Nazi thought someone might ask, what happened to them? And then they could say, oh, well, he is safe, he is living in that wonderful place that is in Israel. And at a certain time, the Red Cross said, well, we have to have a look at that Red Cross. And they sent a delegation to the Red Cross. And they played, I think it's the first and the only time in history that a whole town was forced to play act for the Red Cross. And they had to play happy times. It was all organized like a big stage play. The children were fed sardines. And they were taught that when they got the sardines, they had to say, not sardines again. <laughs> but first of all, you had to tell them what a sardine was. <coughs> they had never, never eaten something like that. It's so cynical. And the worst thing was that the commander of Theresienstadt thought, well, it's too crowded. Doesn't look nice. So he sent a few hundred old people to Auschwitz to have to make it more airy. And, and the Red Cross fell for it completely. There is a, a detail, just to show you how how crazy that world was, there is a detail that the man from the Red Cross they showed him a performance and the children's choir was singing. And he said, oh, it's such a wonderful children's choir. And he said to the commander, you must promise me never to separate those children. And he said, yeah, I promise it to you. They'll stay together. <laughs> and the next day, when the Red Cross had come, he sent the whole children's choir to Auschwitz. So. That, and this theater had worked. 